All right, what I'd like to do is graph y is equal to 3 times sine of pi over 2x plus pi over 2 uh, plus 1. <coughs> As usual, the first thing to do is factor out b, which is pi over 2 here. So uh, you can rewrite this as y is equal to 3 sine of pi over 2 times quantity x plus 1 uh, plus 1. And um, as usual, the thing to do is first graph y is equal to sine of x. That one won't be so key here, but the next one to graph right after this would be to graph y is equal to sine of pi over 2x. Now, again, with the pi, this looks a little weird. So we're actually going to ditch graphing sine of x right away. And we're just going to compute for this one and for all the future functions we're graphing. The period, just by the formula, is 2 pi over absolute value of b. So you plug in 2 pi over pi over 2. And when you rewrite this, you have 2 pi times 2 over pi. The pi's cancel, and you're actually left with a period of 4. So we'll first graph this, uh, basically the sine graph, but using a period of 4. Then we'll graph uh, sine of pi over 2 times the quantity x plus 1. And so this plus 1 is going to end up being a shift to the left by 1, right? The plus is the sort of counterintuitive shift the other direction. Then we'll take care of y is equal to 3 sine of pi over 2 times x plus 1, okay? Um, and then finally, we'll take care of this plus 1 at the end. So you have y is equal to 3 times sine of pi over 2 times x plus 1, then plus a 1. I think I went a little too happy on the right parentheses there. So first we'll graph uh, this function. This is basically the graph of sine, which we're skipping, but now use, a, use the period as 4. So just a rough picture, you know, something like, you know, just kind of graph in sine first, really. Okay, so same thing here, okay. There's the graph of sine, but uh, if the period starts, if the cycle starts over right here and the period is four, that means that's the four. Now we have to take care of this shift to the left by one. So what does a shift of left by one look like? Well, first of all, there's four, that's two. So this upper peak there is actually one. And so this lower peak is 3. Sorry that this picture is not the best. But if everything shifts over here by one unit, that means the point that's at the three, uh, at the 2 moves to where the 1 is. Okay, So this point there moves to right there. The point that's at the 3, right at the bottom, this should be right at the bottom here, moves also one unit over to right here, and so on. So you'll get a graph that should look something like that. And we can actually see now, I mean, it's sort of harder at first to see exactly what's going on, but now that you can see that you actually have these intercepts at the odd numbers, 1, 3, and so on, I'd like to just redraw the picture somewhat more cleanly right now since we are going to kind of mess with this picture and do all sorts of things to it. Um, but here maybe we'll just label 1, 2, I'm going to try to make this clean. Um, but at the, let's see, at this, so the odd places are where there's a crossing. Maybe we'll draw on the dots first. Those are x-intercepts. And the first crossing here is actually going to be this lower crossing because this lower crossing moved to the left. Okay, so the graph should do something like that. Okay, rough picture, right? Um, also, here at the evens, you had the lower peak, the upper peak. So the next even is zero, actually. And you have this upper peak there, and then at negative 1, the graph crosses through, and at negative 2, that's the next peak or valley, I guess, and then negative 3 is the next intercept, and so on. Okay, so that's rough picture of this function. Um, the next thing to do is to take care of the 3. Okay, so if we were to graph this function, all we do is take the picture that we currently have, Right where the intercept here is 1, but now this 3, what this does is everything stretches vertically by a factor of 3. So there's 1, 2, 3, and basically just elongate this graph a bit, and you have something like that. Um, again, the picture is not that great. I'm not so good at drawing on this thing yet. And then finally, you can take care of at the end, take the y value you have, and then there's a simple plus one that occurs to it. Okay, so this is now very pleasant. 
Um, and so if the graph moves up by one, take the part that's in blue and draw this just kind of one unit higher and you should have a graph that, I'm just trying to mimic the blue graph, just kind of draw above it. Think like a magnet is levitate, Ooh. That was not, not quite good enough, but something like that should sort of do the trick. Um, now, you may wonder why we're doing this in this order all the time, but you'll find that this is extremely helpful to first rewrite, then graph your basic sine or cosine. Take care of the period first because this horizontal stretch is weird. Then take care of the shift. And if you can take care of those two things, these are the most annoying parts, then once that's all set, the vertical work tends to be quite a bit easier once you have the horizontal stuff set. And so this three, well, that's just a stretch out this way. But every the, all the intercepts are in the places you already need them. That's really the point. And then finally, this plus one, all oh, that just moved everything up one. Um, if you try to reverse the process and do these things first, you'll find that the horizontal work becomes a, a really big mess.